In this video, we're comparing the performance of the Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus G14 versus the Acer Predator Triton 300 SE. Two powerful, thin, and light laptops that would make great on-the-go friendly creator machines. First and foremost, let's jump into Geekbench and Cinebench R20 as well as R23. Now in all of these simulated benchmarks, it appears that the Triton 300 is standing out on top of the Asus Zephyrus G14. But as we move into the real world test, you can see that in Blender, because the Asus Zephyrus G14 has an eight gig VRAM card, compared to the Acer Triton 300 SE with a six gig VRAM card, you're gonna see better performance in Blender. Now, as we move into 3D modeling, you can see that both in Autodesk Maya and Autodesk 3ds Max, that there's not a big difference between these two laptops. Now, as you move on to PTC Creo, the difference starts to pull away a little bit by almost 25 points. And finally, as we move into SolidWorks, we see a substantial difference by just about 70 points. Now, the Radeon GPUs are much better equipped for SolidWorks. Because this is an RTX 3060, it's a gaming GPU inside of the Triton 300, not a workstation GPU, we're not seeing as great a performance as we would hope. Whereas the RX 6700S, inside of the G14 is showing much better performance. I'm freaking stoked about the Patreon that we're about to launch. Absolutely. We're launching a freaking Patreon and you should join because it's going to be awesome. We're going to have never before seen content on the channel. Patreon, not channel, channel's YouTube. So why is this content not being posted to YouTube? Well, the answer is really simple. I know that there is a tight group of loyal followers that follow my content and I want to reward and be a part of the tight, loyal community that we have been building here as we've been reaching 85,000 subscribers. And I want to go deeper with you guys. I want to do live Q and A's. I want to get face to face with you and chat in a live video call with my most faithful subscribers. I want to repurpose that content and put it on my channel so you can then be featured in my channel with me. I want to do exclusive giveaways that I can't just launch to the masses of communities. There's sometimes I get to keep laptops, but I don't need them. And so it's a place for me to basically just give back to my most loyal community followers. Now, as we move on to Photoshop, you can see that the Predator Triton 300 takes over again. The i9 processor is a little bit better optimized than the Ryzen 9 processor in the G14. And so we're seeing better performance out of the Triton. Now, as you move on to After Effects, same thing. We're seeing better performance out of the i9 12900H in After Effects than we are seeing in the Ryzen 9 6900HS. Now, as we move on to video editing playback, they're both pretty much neck and neck. For the Triton 300 SE, you can see the results coming up on the screen for 4K at 6K B-RAW and 6K RED footage. You can see about 800 drop frames for B-RAW and about 5,000 for red footage. Now, as we move on to the Zephyrus, we see slightly better results with 580 out of B-RAW for drop frames and 3,399 for red footage. So you're gonna see slightly better playback out of the G14 with that eight gig VRAM card. Now, as far as the 4K export time is concerned, they are neck and neck, not a big difference between the two laptops. So really anyone would be a good choice for 4K. Moving on to 6K B-RAW, we see a slightly better export time out of the Zephyrus G14 by about one minute, basically one minute exactly, give or take a couple seconds. So for 6K B-Raw, you're gonna have better results for both playback and for the export time from the G14. Now looking at DaVinci Resolve, you can see that we have a better export time out of the Triton 300 by over a minute. So if you're gonna be a DaVinci Resolve user, 
the i9 with the RTX 3060 showing a little bit better results here. Now, in regards to the thermal temperatures during the 4K export, the Triton 300 has better thermal performance at only 80 degrees Celsius for the 4K export. You can see those thermal results on the screen for the 4K export and fan modes. As you move over to the G14, you're seeing upwards of 90 degrees Celsius out of the G14. So it's a much hotter laptop compared to the Triton 300 with the Intel CPU. But if we're talking about battery life, which one's the most on-the-go friendly unit, it's gonna be the G14 by a whole lot more. You're gonna get over 12 hours of battery life out of the G14 for like productivity or streaming video compared to the Triton 300 at about the six hour range for battery life for the productivity and video streaming playback. Now, punch for punch, if I was personally gonna purchase one of these laptops, I would lean towards the G14. I think it's an overall better unit as far as the performance is concerned. However, from a screen standpoint, the Triton 300 does have a better screen. So it's gonna be more color accurate as you see the results coming up on the screen right now. For the Triton 300, it's gonna be a little bit brighter. It's gonna have better color gamut range and color accuracy out of the OLED display. Compared to the G14, as you can see those results coming up on the screen right now for color gamut range and color accuracy as well as brightness. It's close, but it's just not as high of a quality of screen as the Triton 300 with the OLED display. So give or take, they both have their pros, they both have their cons, really the choice is up to you which one you want. Do you want the performance or do you want maybe the screen? That's really where it boils down to. And of course the G14 has that better battery life. Um, so really the decision is yours. Let me know in the comment section below which one you're thinking of purchasing. Otherwise, links if you are ready to make a purchase or check out the live pricing of either device. Likes if this video has brought you some value and subs if you don't wanna miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.